Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am creating a Christmas card doing a lot of no line coloring and during the making of this card I also had some bumps on the road so I'm just going to show you those and let you see how I fixed it. So first of all the original idea was to do some watercoloring all over this panel and I don't actually know why I was folding my purple tape over but that is not of any use but for that I am going to stamp out this railway on the bottom of my panel and I'm going to do some no line coloring therefore I'm stamping this out using the antique linen distress ink and then I will take some browns to color it in so the original idea was to have the complete background on this panel, one layer, um, just doing some watercoloring myself. I'm trying to get some mountains going on, but there it failed already. So here I am first going to tackle that railway and it worked out really wonderfully. So I was excited about that. And then I couldn't bear with the idea of just throwing all that work away. So here I'm first adding my sky using some tumbled glass. Really soft. I also just want a really soft card. So I have this for my sky. Also I'm using Stratmore Bristol Smooth. Uh, this can handle water but not that much. So it was really important to let the paper rest in between because um, otherwise it can also rip and that's not what we want so now onto the railway I'm taking my zero paintbrush again this is just a regular cheap paintbrush it's not anything fancy um, but it works for me this size and I'm just adding my distress ink I know that I haven't zoomed in yet but I will do it in a bit I realized it a bit later that I wasn't zoomed in so really sorry um, but I'm just adding browns onto this railway So I was really happy with the railway, it's already lucky, um, but then I started on the mountains that I wanted to create and let me tell you, I just cannot get it right free-handed. I don't know why, I just wanted some different heights of mountains, um, but it just didn't work. And 
this is one of those times that I really say to myself, see, you cannot do anything freehanded. I love stamps and I love dice and they really, really help me to create wonderful cards, but I cannot do it on my own. If there weren't any dice or stamps, I wouldn't be making cards, for sure. So what I did to fix it was uh, a bit strange maybe. Uh, but I wanted to keep this railway because it was gorgeous as it is. So the idea was that I was going to add some mountains above it. But then the bottom of the mountains needed to have the shape of my railway. And with this die I could sort of create that. So I did that. And then I took some mountains from Mama Elephant and figured out a way it would cover the mistake. So it was a bit fiddling with getting it right for my paper. Um, but then it worked out. So it's important to follow the railway on the bottom and make sure that it is aligned perfectly. And when that's the case, I could add these mountains onto my paper with some purple tape as well. And I also run this through my die cutting machine. So the next thing I had to solve was the stitch detail that I have on my panel but not on the mountains. So I took those basic rectangles once more. I first aligned my mountains. Also again checking those railways. I'm temporarily taping it down using some purple tape and then I will use my basic rectangles to cut out the perfect size. And then these mountains that I have die cut also needed some color so I just quickly went over it really roughly with that weathered wood that I wanted to use originally as well. Now I just didn't want to fiddle with the edges over there so I went over it and then later I will trim off the stitch detail. So this will mean that my mountain is going to be inside of my panel later on in the card and then there will be the stitch details that are flat so the mountains i'm going to add with some Simon's stamp big mama foam tape i also die cut the caps for these mountains i adore this detail that you can add with the dies from mama elephant I'm just checking what should go where and then I'm going to adhere it. But first I'm trimming off, as I told you before, those stitch details. And here you can see my mountains. Adding those caps. And then once my background is sort of finished, I am going to start on these images. So this way you know what went wrong, uh, but we will be the only people that will know. Um, <laughs> because it's completely covered and that's what I wanted to show you. I first really panicked because I didn't think that I was able to do those railways once more like this. 
so I just had to be creative and find a way to use them still. So this worked out fine. So now that these are on my panel, I decided that I wanted to add some glitter. So just in case anything was still wet, I'm using my powder too, so that the glitter will only stay there where I am adding some glue. So for the glue, I am taking a quickie glue pen, if I'm not wrong, and I'm just going to go over those stitch details from the caps on the mountains. And then I will add those long fond glitters on top of it. Okay, so fixing the background took a bit of time, um, but it worked out fine and I'm really glad that I tried it so that I can still use these railways. And now it's time to figure out where all the images can go and which I need to color later on because I'm going to do some no-line coloring and it's always nice to not have to color too many images than that there can fit on. Uh, so I'm first trying out placements and then I will do the no line coloring. So these images are really small and tiny and they took a lot of time to color. Um, but in the end I'm really glad that I did the effort uh, to do that. But just know that the biggest part of this video is going to be the no line coloring of these images. So if you don't want to see it you can always skip and check the rest out. Uh, but I just want to warn you, um, this took me a while. Also with the coloring, I am stamping it out using Antique Linen Distress Ink onto Stratmore Bristle Smooth. And I'm really trying to use soft colors to get a really, really soft and cute card in the end. So that's why I'm choosing uh, these specific colors to color with later on.
Now that everything is colored in, I'm using the matching dies to cut them out. And before adding anything to this panel, I'm first going to add some details to some of the images, like some glitter. Um, and I'm doing that again using the same tweaky glue pen and the same glitters from Lawn Fawn as I used previously for the mountain caps. Now I can start with adding everything onto my card panel. I have some foam squares in different sizes. So here you can see I have a really thin one, regular, and then I also have really thick ones that I would use later on. Uh, but this is a way to really get some more dimension going. If you vary in depth of your foam squares, you can really create some fun stuff. So here I am adding everything on the back of this one. And then I can start removing everything.
This card still needs a sentiment, so I'm using this Merry Christmas, really simple, on the top of the card. And I'm going to stamp it out using some Gina K Design Amalgam Ink. And then I can add this panel onto a card base and it will be finished. So I know that this video was quite long, uh, but I hope that seeing the coloring might inspire you to do something similar or to start with no line coloring. If you are a beginner, I would really recommend um, coloring in some bigger images to just get to know your paintbrush and then you can evolve to smaller ones. Um, and for the rest, I hope that you really enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, you can leave them down below and I hope to see you back soon. Bye!